my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Welcome back. We're in part three, Brittle Fracture Assessment, and this is episode one. So this is the introductory episode, and, and uh, we're going to jump into a level one assessment in this video, and we're going to focus on pressure vessels. And we have borrowed this from example 3.1 in uh, API 579.2, which is the example problem and uh, that was done just after 2007 edition but uh, the it's pretty much the same for the 2016 and 2007 versions so let's let's jump in and have a look I'm going to continue and look at example 3 1 in much more detail so we're going to perform a level 1 MAT and uh, assessment and um, this is for a shell section of a pressure vessel and it was constructed to ask me whether pressure code section 8 division 1 and in this example it's the part is the shell that we're looking at is one inch thick and it's made out of a very common uh, material, structural material called SA285 grade C, which is found quite a lot in the United States. Fracture assessments is basically a look at your minimum minimum design metal temperature and comparing against the, the process conditions. We, we did a whole series of videos uh, about minimum design pressure and about the CET and the MET values and uh, it has its own section. So have a look at that and to provide some more background about minimum, minimum uh, design temperatures. And uh, but so this whole part three has to do with you know the the transition uh, to temperatures where, which which uh, the toughness of a material leaves the part. So in in part A of three four two one, it simply states that this uh, in order to do a level one assessment, you have to be compliant. The vessel has to be designed to weather pressure vessel code section eight division one and two. Secondly, the you have an option. You can use the governing thickness and exemption curves that are found in Section 8, Division 1 and 2. And uh, there's a whole lot of really good information found in earlier videos, so as we said. And next one is Part B. We can use impact test results um, to, to, to look, look through the assessment for our, uh, our uh, to determine the middle fracture issues. If we continue, uh, there, there's a section in 3.4.21 3 uh, level one assessment pressure vessels. If the set, uh, set value, which is the you know the process temperature, is uh, minimum temperature is greater than the MAT, the material, then uh, then it's acceptable. Okay, they, they basically, if there's a change in operating conditions, then you need to do a reassessment. And the second thing is maintenance and inspection is required as per API 510 or NB23 or an equivalent. At step one, as and right buried in the procedure for a level one assessment, it says make a decision use one of the two options. So reminder that it's the governing thickness and exemption curve approach, which is also found in the, in the codes, and or you can use impact testing. So in this particular example, we're going to review or do the assessment based upon option A. 
dive into option A, there's a few things we have to check. The first one is a boiler pressure vessel code, section eight, division one or two. Is it being followed? Has it, the vessel been designed to that? And the answer is confirmed. Yes, it has been. And the second criterion is the design allowable stress must be equal to or, or less than 25 KSI. And so when we go, how do we do that? Well, we can we knew the material SA 285 grade C. We go into the pressure vessel codes uh, section 2D and uh, for and reminder that this is the allowable stress based upon the coincidental temperature. We come up with 15.7 KSI. We meet the criterion, so we're confirmed. So we can we can proceed with uh, option A. So as per procedure, we have to look look up these values in step one. First thing is we have to find out the um, nominal uncorroded thickness of the of the joint and there's a lot of things about governing thickness and so on um, and that gets more complicated depending on the, the types of joint joints that you have in our case we have a shell so the governing thickness is is equal to the um, the thickness of the shell so it's quite simple so recall that we have one inch thick and we need to be less than one and a half and the materials construction, we looked up that and uh, it meets the requirements. It's a carbon steel, so we can continue. 1.2, there's a bit of repetition with 1.1. Determine the uncorroded governing thickness. And for a shell, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's just the, thick, the nominal thickness of the, of the shell, the uncorroded section. So in this case, it's, it's one inch thick is what, how you're supposed to do the evaluation, which is very similar to, to what is required in the pressure vessel coats. So for formed heads, if we had one, then we, we could use the minimum thickness uh, inside that knuckle there. Um, and, uh, but in this case, we're not applicable, so we'll continue. Three is where we start to actually look at the, the curve. So in the material specification, we, we look up the listing of our material, 285 grade C, and then we, we find out that we should use curve A. And, uh, and so we can use, we've confirmed that we can use uh, figure 3.4. And so if we had no information available, the, the um, API 579 says that we can use curve A. Table 3.2, the material curves to figure out where we are. And you can see that um, it's we fall into part one, all carbon and low alloy steel plates, structural shapes and bars that aren't listed in curves B, C, and D below. And, and if you go through those tables, you'll see that um, this is the only spot where we can take. So we have to use curve A. Let's look at governing plate thickness. One inch thick plate, which we determined in the earlier steps. We go all the way up to curve A, and then we go across, and hence curve A the MAT is 69 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really quite high, or 21 degrees centigrade. This, this is where our minimum allowable temperature is. So uh, that's not really great news. So let's continue. Maybe there's something else that we can do. In step 1.4, we have some options. So we determined from figure 3.4, which is the previous slide, that uh, 69 Fahrenheit or 21 degrees temperature is our mat. So uh, there's some other statements in there asking questions about flanges. And if you have flanges, just like in the codes in earlier videos, um, there's, you know, the, there's an exception for the uh, you have to use this minus 29, but there are exceptions for the flange next, so for forged nozzles and so on. So otherwise, in our example, this is not applicable. And, um, and the mat uh, can be reduced as well to minus 48 if the wall thickness is less than two, two and a half millimeters. Just, again, just like, you know, section eight, division one, um, 
and division two. In this case, it's NA not applicable. And the other one is if we had steel nuts, then we were limited to minus 48 degrees centigrade. So we're going to continue. Step 1.5, the future MAT reduction checks. So uh, we have to go to ASME uh, and, and look up the material. And we do that. And we find that this material, this, this 285 grade C, is a P1 group 1 material. And so we're OK. And, and they're saying that we can do this further reduction of the MAT if we are P1 material or P1.2. So the, the next step is the wall thickness. If our wall thickness is less than one and a half inch, then, um, then we can go ahead and uh, use the, this further reduction check. The first thing is that there, there has to be post weld heat treat and no subsequent work. And in that condition, it's true. Materials refer to ASME boiler pressure vessel code section 9, table QWQB42 for ferrous materials. And if you go in there, and that's the, that's the section on welding, you can find what all these uh, p values mean. So in our case, we looked up our material, which is uh, ASA 285 grade C, and we find that it's it's under uh, P1 material group one. So that means that uh, we can uh, use this to, for further credit. We pass in step 1.4, we can take advantage of this additional credit to uh, reduce our MAT further because we kind of need to because it's 69 Fahrenheit. So we can go to step 1.5 and reduce the, uh, take advantage of the reduction checks. So what we do is we have an equation. So we take the MAT from step 1.4 and recall that was 69 Fahrenheit. And then we can take off 30, Fahrenheit from that. And then once that's done, we've adjusted that temperature down to 39 Fahrenheit. Some conclusions here about what's going on. So based on the curve A shown in figure 3.4, the MAT of 69 was established for the shale section without any, any allowance for the post well heat treat. And the second criterion is the material is a P1 group one steel, as we determined by reviewing section nine. And we applied the, the, uh, the allowance for the post weld heat treat and, and the criterion talked about earlier. And we can reduce that further, another 30 degrees further to establish an, a new MAT of 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And that concludes this uh, first example in, um, in part three. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.